Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Was Trained by Madara, Hercules, Escanor, Acnologia, Garu, Shirohij and Cumber movie. Before we start please go support Ankaligan in the black for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay as a male in this story. Chapter 1. Izuku Midoriya lives in a world where 80% of the people have a quirk, while the rest of the percentage do not have it, so they receive abuse from the other percentage. The boy Izuku was kicked out of his parents' house for not having a quirk, but a hero who works at UA accepted him, so that years later, he would include him in the UA because he saw potential in the boy. He went through a lot of things although he had to endure the beatings of his sister and his best friend or former best friend Kasumi, but now the tests of students against students were being done. Azawa. Next will be Izuku Uchiha against the teachers. Hamanari. Do you think he can do it? Kasumi. Deku will lose for sure, he only managed to show a little strength, nothing more. Tomi. Although it's not strange that she takes pills all the time. Fem Todoroki. Izumi. She only takes them so she can keep her strength safe. Jiru. Like steroids. Inventions. Yes. Azawa. Come on Izuku. Izuku was walking until he saw all the teachers in front of him. Izuku. So here you all are. He said this while looking at all the teachers, although All Might was in the background. Midnight. It doesn't matter if you don't have a time limit in this test unlike the others. Cements. Apart from being alone, you can't beat all of us. Izuku. Surely. At that point he was hit by a Cementos attack, crashing him against a wall. Cementos. Sure, I don't care if Azawa got you into UA on a recommendation. Kasumi. So I'm coming in like this. Endeavor. You're too weak to be around here. Izuku. I'm tired of hiding my power. At that point his body began to tremble, something that everyone noticed, so he put his hand in his pocket but didn't find what he was looking for. Izuku. Wait, what about my pills? Izuku searched for his pills faster. Izumi. I don't think he'll be upset about this. Izawa. Those are his pills. Izumi. Yeah, so what? Izawa. He needs them so he doesn't suffer. No one understood that until they saw Izuku start screaming at the screens. Izuku. Ah. Bull screaming he fell to the floor riding in pain, so Izawa took the pills to run towards Izuku, while everyone watched him ride in pain, while he grabbed the collar of his clothes and tried to take off his hero clothes, while the other heroes tried to get close to Izuku, but smoke began to come out of him apart from a great heat, making it so that no one could get close to him. Momo. What's wrong? Izuku managed to tear off the top of his clothes, revealing that a mark like a tattoo was forming on his chest, but when Izawa arrived, he tried to give him his pills, but because of the heat he couldn't until he only left a trail of smoke, not letting his body be seen, while well, the teachers didn't know what to do. Midnight. Izuku is okay. Everyone thought he wasn't going to answer. Izuku. Like never before, I feel like new. Everyone was surprised because he answered them as if nothing had happened. Izuku. Izawa can you pass me the clothes? And that Izawa throws him a cape along with a pair of pants which were like those from Fairy Tales Acnologia. Izuku. Now I will show all my power. He emerged from the trail of smoke revealing a normal Izuku who covered almost his entire body with a cloak, although he left his left arm outside. Izuku. Do you have life insurance? Endeavor. Yes. Midnight. Why? Izuku. Because I'm going to break everyone's ass. Chapter 2. After Izuku entered to do the heroes versus villains test where he suffered from the pain until it ended, so that they could only see how his clothes changed, apart from having some blue marks all over his left arm that stuck out of the cape, apart from having a change of attitude, while well, Izawa returned with his offspring. Izuku. We'll start whenever you want. Momo. What happened to him? Izawa. When Izuku was just a child I picked him up from the street, a few days passed, and I took care of him despite being quirkless, but one day his power or rather powers awakened since he had more than two quirks, but he lost control, so he took those pills to control himself. Jiru. But I could use a bit of that strength. Azawa. Yes, now that he does not take his pills, the years he did not use his quirks took their toll on him, and not only did his mentality change, but also his strength, intelligence, and physique. Cementos. It doesn't matter if he has a change of attitude, we can still beat him. He said this to make Cement come out of the floor and go against Izuku. Izuku. Pathetic. He said this to use his left arm to deliver a blow that destroyed Cemento's attack. Izuku. That's all. Present Might would try to use his scream against Izuku, but he only covered himself with his left arm, while he only moved a few centimeters from the spot until Present Might stopped screaming and became tired. Izuku. Fine but I'll teach you a real scream. 
At that he made the roar of a dragon that made everyone cover their ears at this, but when they had just taken their hands off their ears, present might received a blow that sent him flying and crashing into a building. Midnight. I defeat him with one hit. And that they see how Izuku makes an attack from his mouth, but Cementos uses his quirk to make many walls which collided with the attack, but they had to run, since they could not withstand Izuku's attack. Cements. It is stronger for some reason. Nezu. I'll take care of it. The mouse with a wrecking ball caused a chain reaction causing many buildings to fall on Izuku, but when they thought they had won the place, it began to shake to see Izuku come out of the rubble as if nothing had happened. Izuku. That's annoying. He took a large piece of rubble to throw it at the principal, who had to get out of the wrecking ball, but saw how a quantity of fire went against him, but before it hit him, a giant thing protected him, to the surprise of the teachers. Izuku. Come on, don't tell me that's all. But that being he began to attack the teachers who dodged the attack of that being, but when they tried to attack him, they did nothing until All Might hit him with a blow that made a small crack, so the being's hand took him to throw him through several buildings. Izuku. It seems they can't do anything to me, not even the gas that Midnight throws at me can get through it. The teachers tried to do something, but nothing worked until he got tired, and with that being he attacked the teachers, leaving everyone out of combat except Endeavor and All Might who returned, but Izuku stopped using that being. Izuku. I better finish you off. And that they see how his body grew, being more muscular than before, while he looked at the last two teachers who were sweating from the heat from Izuku to Endeavor. All Might. I better get this over with. He went to hit Izuku, but he jumped into the air while extending his hand back. Izuku. Divine Combat Axe Rita answers my call. In the distance you can see an axe sticking out of the ground. Jiru. What is that noise? Mina. Look at the sky. He watches an axe ends up in Izuku's hands. Izuku. Sacred treasure, free yourself. And that a light forms in the sky like the sun itself while Endeavor throws his blue fire at him, but Izuku lowers his axe, while All Might moves away from the place, so that a cloud of dust forms, but when he leaves they see Endeavor lying on the floor unconscious. Izuku. How bad and I wanted to show more of my magnificent power, but you were smart to dodge my attack. Looking at All Might. All Might. How come Endeavor's fire didn't do anything to you? Izuku. Sunshine, my magnificent power, there is no fire that can overshadow mine. All Might. You have a lot of arrogance. All Might hit him in the face, knocking off his cape, so everyone could see how Izuku had blue marks on his left arm, while on his right chest, he had a tattoo apart from another tattoo on his back being a lion, but Izuku hit All Might, moving it away from him. Izuku. That hurts a little. They started hitting each other, but All Might made Izuku back away. Hendo. All Might is winning. Azawa. Not by much. Monoma. What do you mean? Azawa. It's almost noon. In the fight All Might hit Izuku in the face but didn't move him. Izuku. I'll tell you two mistakes, the first was not finishing me off from the start. All Might. And the second one. Izuku. The second was to keep me fighting until this hour. All Might. Why? At that he puts the axe aside. Izuku. Because it's noon. He said this while raising a finger as fire came out of his body, All Might moved away to go against Izuku, but he only used one hand. Izuku. Eskiner sword. When he said it a cut appeared on All Might. All Might fell unconscious and Izuku jumped through the exit of the place, winning and passing the test, but ended up falling unconscious. Izawa. Good thing someone takes the teachers. Shoji. I'll take care of Izuku's axe. When I took the axe I couldn't lift it with even two hands. Sato. Let me handle it. He ate sugar, increasing his muscles, but even then he couldn't lift the axe, so he tied all the sugar but still couldn't, so all the men tried, but even then they couldn't lift that battle axe in front of all the women. Sai. When Izuku picked her up he didn't seem to be trying hard. Asumi. How much strength will he have? Chapter 3. After Izuku awakened a power with which he defeated all the teachers apart from passing the test to become unconscious, he was in a bed while remembering something from his past a little after he was kicked out of the house, when Izawa took him off the streets so that he could sleep at his house. Izuku. Where am I? In a dark space. It's your mind. Izuku. Who's there? We are just a few people who will give you power. And that he sees a few people who looked very strong, while some gave off an aura of power, others one of deep fear, and one gave off a feeling that he would be safe. I am Majesty Eskiner the Lion of Pride of the Seven Deadly Sins. With an aura of power and arrogance, Ninetsu no Taizai Universe. I am Madara Ichiha, who was crowned as a shinobi god before all the ninjas of my time. With an aura that gave off fear, Naruto Universe. I am Shirohij known as Whitebeard or as the most powerful pirate. With an aura of pure strength, One Piece Universe. I am Hercules the human who ascended to be a god and takes care of humanity. 
with an aura that he would feel safe, Shumatsu no Valkyrie Universe. I am Aknologia the Dragon of the Apocalypse. With an aura of destruction, Fairy Tale Universe. I am Gaeru the First Human Monster. With a monster aura, One Punch Man Universe. I am Cumber the Evil Super Saiyan. With an aura of bloodlust, Dragon Ball Universe. Izuku was impressed by those in front of him, apart from the fact that with those auras they didn't let him move, something they noticed, so they put them aside so he could at least speak. Izuku. And what do you want with me? Madara. Some rivals we had a long time ago will return, and since we are not here to fight this time, we decided to choose someone who has our powers. Hercules. And you are the one. Humber. You won't be able to stand it at first, but when the time comes, you'll be able to use all of our powers like it's nothing. They tell him about their lives. Izuku. And what do I have to fight against? Eskiner. In my case, it would be the demon king who would try to kill humanity. Eru. I have to seek revenge on a damn bald guy in a cape who defeated me. Madara. An old rival of mine will come and fight you, maybe he is not like that demon king, but I have to beat him at least the one who has my power. Hercules. The gods can attack humanity once more, but they can only send a certain number of gods, but once the attack is made they can never attack again. Shirohij. Someone called Blackbeard will be in the seas again and has to die. Agnologia. With me you only fight against a dragon and nothing more. Humber. I only have to face Broly. Eskiner. Now we will tell you about our powers, mine is Shunshine, it was given to me by the Archangel male who died unlike me, Shunshine will not harm you like it did me, but you can only use it during the day, but at noon your maximum power will reach. Shirohij. Mine is Earthquake, you can make earthquakes just by concentrating your power. Madara. Mine is Chakra apart from that you will have my eyes that are Sharingan and will be able to pass to the Manjikyo. Eru. Martial arts are my thing, apart from being able to be a monster. Hercules. My thing is that you will have greater strength than before and that you will have these tattoos that I have. Acnologia. Mine is a dragon slayer, you can eat many things apart from transforming into a dragon, each thing you eat will recover your strength during the fight. Humber. My thing is that you will be able to use Kai apart from that you will be able to use evil power and you will have transformations. Izuku. Okay, I'll use your powers properly. Since then I have been training. He will end up being a god. Chapter 4. After Izuku fell asleep while he remembered his teachers about him and how they gave him his powers about him, the boy only got up to put on his pants, but saw that he didn't have his shirt, but saw how Azawa entered the place when I have looked at him. Azawa. This is you woke up. Izuku. Yes, my shirt. Azawa. It didn't fit you so we sent them to make you a new one. Izuku. Okay, I'll go look for her. Azawa. I'd better go get it for you, I don't want my child to end up graped. He said this without knowing that when he fainted he was going to be graped more than once by the girls who saw his shapely body that he had apart from the tattoos and scars when he left his companions entered. Paminari. Hey Izuku, what was that enormous power you showed in the test? Asumi. Damn Deku, why didn't you tell me about your quirks? Blushing like the other girls at seeing Izuku's naked torso. Izuku. Hey, small details. Then Azawa arrives and gives him his shirt to leave the place. Izuku. Azawa sensei can I change my hero name? Azawa. Yes. Izuku. Thank you. And that they arrive at the room where they entered, but to their surprise, he sat away from Yuraka and Lita. Yuraka. Deku kun why don't you sit with? She was silenced by a slap from Izuku in front of everyone's gaze. Izuku. Don't talk to me. Yuraka. Why? Izuku. You may be my girlfriend, but I know you cheated on me with Lita. Everyone was shocked by this. Izuku. Did you think I wouldn't notice? Lita. Hey buddy. Izuku. You're not my friend, at least they should have told me, but instead they continued. Yuraka. Deku-kun lost. Izuku. I'm not going to do it. The boy seemed upset until Izawa arrived at the scene. Izawa. Everyone will go to camp, but tomorrow we will go to the mall to buy the necessary things. Everyone just listened, the next day they all went to the mall, but Izuku was missing. Izami. And Izuku. Fem Kirishima. Izuku. I'm here. Everyone turned to see Izuku who was sitting on a motorcycle while wearing a black jacket which was open revealing a white shirt while he had black pants with a belt of the same color. Haminari. Is that your bike? Izuku. Yeah, let's go shopping anyway. Everyone went in. Shoji. How did you buy it? Izuku. I sing in some places and I get paid although I made some adjustments. Mina. Like which ones? He then rolled up his jacket, revealing a device that looked like an ornament on his wrist, but they saw how he touched it to make the motorcycle leave the place before everyone's eyes. Izuku. 
Like that, I can control it from this device. Everyone started buying their things although they saw that Izuku only bought a few apart from seeing him in an instrument place, buying apart from another camping stuff being a few of these. Jiru. Why the instruments? Izuku. I have a show tomorrow. Mineta. And what about camping? Izuku. We're going to camp, I don't buy much because I have some things at home, but why exclusive clothes and things that are useless at camp? At this everyone was ashamed. Momo. Hey Izuku, can you help me with my things? Izuku. Okay. And that he has the girl's bags in front of everyone's eyes, they bought things until they finished so they went outside. Izuku. Momo, should I take you home? Momo. Okay, thanks. Mineta. How are you going to carry it on a mo too? I watch as he opens a car with some keys. Izuku. A motorcycle isn't the only thing I have, I open the door for it. She said this as she opened the door for Momo who came up while the girls were jealous of the brunette, so she took her to her house, where Momo's parents began to bother Momo that she already had a boyfriend. Chapter 5. After they bought things at the mall, apart from Izuku taking Momo to her house for the next day since it was a weekend, everyone was getting ready because at the mall, they asked him for tickets to go see one of his shows, so he did it so they could meet at the place. Hamanari. Good thing we have VIP passes. Okoyami. Although I don't understand why we asked for this. Mina. To know more about the new Izuku. Everyone entered the place seeing the stage where they saw all the people who were preparing, so they just looked at everyone who passed by. Toru. When is Izuku's turn? At that moment everything went out so they could see a light shining on a green-haired man who was only wearing a white shirt and black pants with shoes of the same color, so the screams of his fans did not take long to come. Izuku. Thank you very much to all my fans who came thanks for your support. Then he takes out a device that connects him to a place. Izuku. Tonight is very special for me, not only because my fans came, but also some beautiful ladies and tough men who are my friends and classmates. At that, class 1 on the men's side felt flattered, while the women blushed at what the green-haired man said. Izuku. Okay, let's get started. At that moment he turned on the music as he began to sing. When he finished singing, everyone was satisfied with the music so Izuku left the place, but when he walked he saw how his fans wanted an autograph from him, but the guards wouldn't let him pass, so he approached. Bard. Sir Izuku. Izuku. Let me through. At that Izuku walked among his fans starting to give them autographs apart from doing one more thing that made his fans feel better, until he left so class 1 to use their passes to go to where Izuku was. Izuku. What did you think? Izami. Very well. Then a man entered. Man. Well Izuku, as always every time you go on stage you attract more people to this place. He said this to give him a briefcase and leave. Izuku. Do you want a drink? Aminari. Thank you. Lita. But that is. Izuku. Nothing has totally legal alcohol as always. Jiru. I see how you had your vehicles. Izuku. Yup. They spent a while there until they left the place and each went to their home. Chapter 6. After the show that Izuku did, the following days were normal until one day they had to go to camp, but when everyone was preparing at the UA they saw Izuku arrive with his car, but when he left, they saw that Mina was also there with him getting jealous of the other girls. Girls. Cunning. Izawa. Okay, everyone get in, we have to go. They got in while Izuku showed the same device from before that looked like the predators that marked some things so the car would leave. Azawa. Before I forget, we have a new partner. Girl. Hi, I'm Margaret. Girl. I am Kefla. When Izuku looked at her he felt the power of an archangel being the power of the flash in her, everyone just went up. Mina. Since we're going to be there for a while, Izuku, tell us about your quirks. Izuku. Yes, there are seven. That shocked everyone. Izuku. One is called Monster, it gives me the abilities of a monster, another is called Dragon Slayer, it gives me all the abilities of a dragon, apart from letting me transform into one, Earthquake lets me make an earthquake at will, another is Fortress, it is from this tattoo on my chest, it lets me use my strength that increases as the tattoo gets bigger, another is called Chakra. It gives me multiple abilities. Basumi. Like which ones? Izuku. The chakra lets me do elemental attacks, but I have to do some things with my hands like movements, apart from creating some false images for you, although they will look very real, and I can use this eye called Sharingan. I change his eyes to those of the Sharingan so that they return to normal. Izuku. Aside from the fact that he was able to make this scroll that you see using chakra be able to store a lot of things, another one called Shunshine lets me use the power, but only when it is daytime, which is the one with which I defeated All Might, and the last one is a Saiyan. Tomi. And what is that like? Izuku. The Saiyan is that I am a warrior by nature, that makes me the best in fights apart from transformations. 
Mina. Hi, I'm Mina. What quirks do you have? Margaret. Mine is flash, it lets me go at great speeds, so much so that for you, it would be like teleportation. Hefla. Mine is Saiyan. Momo. Like Izuku's. Hefla. Not really. Izuku. We Saiyans are divided into two parts, the lower class, the weakest, and the upper class, the strongest. Hefla. But there are only two Saiyans who are unique. Izuku. The legendary Super Saiyan who is a prodigy in fighting, far surpassing the upper class that Kefla has, and the evil one that is me, which is somewhat similar to Kefla's, but this power is evil. Mina. So the girls are strong. Izuku. The strongest but I surpass them. Hefla. Do you want to fight? Izuku. Of course. Momo. No. Azawa. Leave them alone, this is normal for Saiyans. Izuku told Azawa everything, and it was a secret between the two it's surprising because I didn't expect another one of my offspring to be a Saiyan, one thing that characterizes them is that they have a monkey tail. While the two stared at each other, they revealed their tails, leaving everyone in shock. Margaret's mind. I know I now take Ludocile's place, but this boy who has the son is very strong, I'm sorry. Hefla's mind. This is going to be so much fun. Chapter 7. After everyone was talking about their quirks apart from meeting Margaret and Kefla, everyone was fine until they got to the place where they went down to see the forest apart from the pussycats being something ridiculous for three people, but when they made the whole place full with the students, some only landed well. Mineta. I can't hold it anymore, I want to go to the bathroom. When he was a robot he was about to attack him, but before he could do it Izuku kicked the robot. Izuku. Hurry up to go to the bathroom. Mineta is leaving. Izuku. Everyone else who also needs to go, go, we don't have much time. That's when Mineta arrived. Hendo. Now. Izuku. I'm going to surround the area to keep us safe. Monoma. How will you do that? Izuku. Jutsu Cake Busan. At that, hundreds of Izuku appeared all over the arena. Izuku. Prodians. All clones. Yes boss. That's where they disperse. Sai. And that. Izuku. It's one of the many things with Chakra. Then he takes out a scroll from which we can see a katana. Hendo. What is the katana for? Izuku. If the clones don't look carefully, I'll destroy a robot as soon as I see it and then kill the clone that didn't take good care of its part. They began to walk as they arrived at the place without any delay, so that later, they went to the hot springs in which Mineta tried to look at the girls, but Kota avoided him, but before he fell Izuku took him. Izuku. Boy, be more careful when you do this kind of things. I left him downstairs to go away. Sato. Are you walking on the wall? Izuku. Yes, Chakra. Mineta. What can't be done with Chakra? Izuku. Kill you, you damn immortal dwarf. Time passed and everyone left, although Izuku went to the forest without anyone noticing, followed by the girls being Kefla and Margaret, Izuku was walking to a point where he stood still. Izuku. I know they're there, I knew they were going to follow me, that's why I walked to this point. Margaret. I'm not surprised by that. Izuku. What do you want? Margaret. I just want you to give me the grace of the sun. Izuku. I'm afraid I won't do that. Margaret. Why? Izuku. Archangel male died, so there is no archangel worthy of his power, well Eskiner also, but Shunshine chose him as his bearer, and now I was chosen, so I'm afraid I won't an apostrophe to do it. Hefla. That aside, I just came to tell you that I will beat you. Izuku. And I know that you can't beat a certain Broly who I understand is like your father, and I will face him in the future, so I don't think you'll beat me again. Margaret. How dare you tell me no. Izuku. We better get back with the others or they'll think we're already a couple or something. Then they return to a place where there is a bonfire. Mineta. They say that forests are very good at scaring people, but there is nothing to scare them. Izuku. It's not how it should look, you have to make the others afraid. I'll give them a demonstration with a little song. During the song Izuku put on a Jeff costume to disappear and reappear behind some of them, scaring them, apart from the fact that the campfire became smaller as if it was going out, but at some moments it became gigantic, scaring everyone until it ended, and Izuku took off his costume to sit where he was. Izuku. You see, you have to make it scary or seem that way. He said this to a class one at trembling with fear. Mineta. Yes. At that the girls threw themselves on Izuku while trembling. Izuku. That's not necessary. Chapter 8. After they arrived at the camp, apart from Izuku talking a little with Margaret and Kefla, so that he would also scare the entire class who couldn't sleep thinking that Izuku would do that again to scare them to death, everyone was thinking what to do for the next day since they were training. Izuku. It seems like they liked my song. Mandalay. You better not do that again. Izuku. 
I was planning on singing it at my next concert anyway, even though I wasn't going to scare anyone. Mineta. It was better than you sang it at the concert. Bazuku. It wasn't that bad anyway. Bazuku makes some clones. Mandalay. And what is that for? Bazuku. I sent them to get some food. When night came they were cooking, but when they finished it looked like a banquet. Momo. Why so much food? At that point Izuku and Kefla began to devour everything in their path, so the class hurried to eat, although they saw how at one point Izuku and Kefla bit into a piece of meat at the same time, so they looked at each other. Kaminari. This is the part where they kiss. Girls. No. In a way Izuku and Kefla began to pull the meat as if they were fighting for it, making everyone drop a sweat until Kefla threw a Kai sphere at him, sending him flying, thus winning. After that, when they went to sleep, everyone was calm, but Izuku woke up. Izuku. There are problems. Elsewhere Koda was fine, but a villain appeared trying to attack him, but Koda was taken over by Izuku. Izuku. I don't think so, muscular. Muscular. You're just the weakest boy in class 1A. Izuku. Do you want to check that? Muscular. As if. He couldn't speak because of a blow from Izuku that left him buried in the floor. Izuku. The truth is that I am the strongest. Muscular. This was what I wanted. Muscular went against Izuku, but he dodged his blows while giving some to Muscular, who stepped back until a white sphere formed in his hand, hitting him in the face, sending him flying crashing into the rocks, but he got up. Muscular. Not finished yet. He changed one of his eyes to go against Izuku, who dodged his blows to kick him in the face, followed by taking him for a knee which drew some blood from his nose, so that he received another blow that made him crawl on the floor, but when he got up, he received a Kai sphere that left him injured. Izuku. You can't beat me. Muscular. Damn brat. It was against Izuku who dodged without problems to give one to Muscular followed by getting into a combat pose while breaking the floor below him. Izuku. Current strike destroys rocks. At that moment a flurry of blows reached Muscular, who was sent flying against the rocks and left unconscious. Izuku. You didn't last long. Anadi takes Koda to leave the place to see his companions fighting, but he saw how they had Kasumi. Izuku. Hey Kurajiri, I have a deal for you. Kurajiri. Which one? Izuku. Leave Kasumi and take me. Gurujiri. Why would I do that? Izuku. There are Nomas over there. Gurujiri. Yes. Izuku. Good thing there's no one there, Katen Great Incineration. When he said it and made the hand signs, a huge amount of fire came out of Izuku's mouth as he hit the Nomas who ended up charred. Izuku. I think it's better if it's me instead of them. Gurujiri. Okay. But that he leaves Kasumi to enter the portal and disappear, surprising everyone. Chapter 9. After they attacked the camp and Izuku made the deal to leave Kasumi in exchange for him, which the villains accepted to go with Izuku, the class 1 who were currently in the hospital, while Izuku was in a dark room in which a door opened revealing all for one. Eifo. Kurajiri told me that you possess a very powerful quirk. Izuku. And you only love me for that, I thought it was because people can like me. Eifo. I want to see that quirk. Izuku. You want to see it so you can steal it from me. Eifo. Smart guy, but you're going to do it the easy way or the hard way. Izuku. If you want it, you have it. He made five clones of him which looked at all for one. Eifo. Just for that. Izuku. Katen great incineration. At that moment they released a huge amount of fire, when the dust cleared, all for one was seen with some burns. Eifo. No wonder they brought you here, you're worth something. At that point Izuku was in front of him to give him a blow that he covered, but he was sent flying. Eifo. That hit was like an earthquake for my arm. Izuku. And I have more, Roar of the Dragon of the Apocalypse. All for one had to dodge the attack that went through many walls. Eifo. Impressive that was more of a quirk. Izuku. Hey, don't look anywhere else. When she said it she looked at him to see how his chest tattoo grew bigger, so that he would end up receiving it, sending him crashing into the wall. Izuku. Don't think you can beat me. And that he concentrates energy in his hand that I look at, but before dodging it Izuku threw it up. Eifo. What a waste of an attack. Izuku. That wasn't an attack, it was a warning. He said this as he began to fly for the League of Villains to follow him, when they went up they looked at the destroyed place, so they could see Izuku who hit Dabi who was thrown against some rocks, followed by a kick to Toga, and then a Kai Sphere sent to Mura flying. Izuku. Come on, that's all. At that moment he received a blow from All for One that sent him crashing into some rubble. Eifo. It seems you forgot about me. Izuku. Don't believe that. At that moment I let out the Susano with which I attacked all for one, giving him a blow that sent him flying to take out a sword and give him another blow, leaving him on the ground. Izuku. I think we can't continue our fight, the cavalry has arrived. 
In those moments, All Might came from heaven and hit All for one hard, causing him to fall back in front of everyone watching the news. The fight between All Might and All for One would happen like the original story, but this time All for One would leave All Might on the floor. A fo? It seems that the symbol of peace can no longer get to me. He was sent flying by a kick from Izuku. Izuku? No, but I'm next and unfortunately for you, it's daytime. He said this as he grew bigger and caused an axe to end up in his hands. Izuku? Prepare to fight, your majesty Izuku the Lion of Pride. A fo? Too much arrogance in front of a brat ha ha. Izuku? Haha <laughs> you're right. At that the axe that was in his arm fell to the ground, making a cut in all for one's chest. Izuku. That's what it's all about, beast. Afo. How is that possible? I didn't see him swing that axe. Before he could do anything, he received a full blow, sending him flying and delivering another blow that sank him into the ground, forming a huge crater, leaving him on his knees. Izuku. What's wrong? Did you find a coin? Afo. Damn, I'm above all villains and heroes, and I won't let someone like you get to me. Then that he hit him with a cruel sun that sent him flying, but he saw how Izuku was on top of him. Izuku. You wasted a lot of energy against All Might while I'm as good as new. He said this as he threw the cruel sun at him, causing him to end up in the lake. Izuku. Flare of pride. In those moments when he came down he saw an all-for-one with burns and also all hurt, meaning that he lost. Izuku. I win. Chapter 10. After the fight between Izuku and All for One in which the green-haired man won, days passed and the time came when they went to UA where they saw a building that said 1A, leaving everyone happy because now they will all be living in the same place, except for a green-haired man. Azawa. Okay guys, you'll be living here for now. Margaret. You better not bother me. Izuku. You better not bother me or I'll give you an old-fashioned punishment. Margaret. I would like to see that punishment, except as you said it is for the old people, so it should not be so serious. Everyone looked at this worried for the girl and more when they saw how Izuku put her on his shoulder. As Izuku saw it. As Margaret saw it. When he put her down everyone saw how she grabbed her butt meaning it hurt, but even though she partly hated it she liked it. Izuku. That's what I mean. Margaret. Damn. Mina. Izuku, I want one too. Izuku. You didn't bother me. Mina. Do you want me to bother you? Izuku. You wanna lose your ass. They all went in to do the same thing from the original room contest story, when they entered Kefla's room, there were only fight things, so they left it to go to Margaret's room, although this one was somewhat particular, since it had many things with the theme of heaven, apart from drawings among this. Izuku. Do you draw? Margaret. Yes, so what? Izuku. You drew cute. The girl blushed without anyone noticing. Mina. Izuku's falls. When everyone entered they saw that it was a large room apart from having a large bed. Haminari. Why did they give you this? Izuku. In fact, I paid part of the money to have it made bigger so I could work quietly, even though the bed wasn't necessary. They saw how on one side there was a stereo, on the other engineering parts apart from a work table while on the wall Izuku's weapons were hanging. Eskiner's axe. Chirohij weapon. Madara's weapon. Weapon that Izuku uses the most. Mina. It's a nice place. Jiru. Although when you make a song we will all listen to it. Izuku. No, the walls are noiseproof, the only way to hear anything is by knocking on the door. At that everyone decided that the best room was Izuku's, so each one could go, even though Yuraka kept bothering Izuku, after a while they knocked on Izuku's door, and when he opened it it was Momo. Momo. Can I come in? Izuku. You are. Momo. Does it still hurt you? About Yuraka and Lita. Izuku. No, I left it a long time ago. Momo. Then why did you never show sadness? Izuku. I left all my sadness at home. Momo. And Azawa helped you get out of that. Izuku. No, nobody helped me. At that point he is hugged by Momo. Momo. If nobody helped you it's because you're holding it inside you, it's bad, you have to let it all out, I won't tell you anything so let it out. Izuku began to cry on Momo's shoulder as she comforted him until there was a knock on her door. Iraka. Deku it's me. Before Izuku got out of bed, Momo came forward. Momo. Izuku is not here. He said this by opening the door a little, letting her see him and not Izuku. Yuraka. So what are you doing in his room? Momo. We were talking but he left and was going to come back soon. Yuraka. Well, when he comes back you can tell him I'm looking for him. Momo. Yes. Momo's mind. I won't let you have it, bitch. When Yuraka left, Momo locked the door, and before Izuku could say anything, he was laid on the bed by Momo, who began to kiss him while caring for her body. Momo. 
Izuku, I always loved you before your true power appeared, but I knew that your Raka wasn't going to let me get close, but now I'm telling you everything I feel for you, apart from showing you that I don't don't care if to have you, I have to share you. Izuku. Momo, I've never seen this side of you except that it's very new to me. Momo. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. He said this as he got up to go to the door and remove the lock and take the handle, but Izuku held his hand. Izuku. But appointments. At that moment he put her against the wall while giving her a kiss. Izuku. For some reason I love this side of you and I love you just the way you are. The girl cried with happiness for being accepted by Izuku while being kissed. Chapter 11. After everyone was in the bedrooms apart from leaving Izuku as the winner of the contest, and Momo having revealed herself to him, and he reciprocated her feelings so that they were currently kissing, but it was more of a battle of tongues in which they were tied so that they separated due to lack of air. Momo. Izuku please make me yours. Izuku. Are you sure? Brind. The two kissed passionately so that Izuku left Momo on the bed. Izuku. If you feel uncomfortable or something, tell me and we'll stop doing it. Momo. Don't think I'll back out. The two of them kissed while he undressed her and she did the same, although Momo was licking Izuku's body of her. Izuku. I didn't know you would do this kind of thing. Momo. If this impresses you, you like it. The girl licked her body so that Izuku would go down to her privacy to take off her panties. Momo. Let's go. Lemon skipped. Izuku. Neither of us won our little tongue fight. Momo. At first it was me, then you, and then we ended up in a tie. Izuku. Then we're tied. Brind. The two of them fell asleep. Chapter 12. After the night that Momo and Izuku had, they were tired and in a kind of tie, so that when Izuku woke up he looked at the sheets of his bed that were white, so he sat up, even though he had half of his body on the sheets, and for some reason Momo didn't have her next to her, so she was about to get dressed and start looking for her, but she saw how the sheets moved. Izuku. Momo what are you doing? And that he noticed how it became like a shark's fin. Izuku. Momo, what are you seriously doing? What looked like a fin noticed how it acted as if it were sinking into the sheets as if it were water, leaving the boy in doubt as to how it did that, but he saw how what looked like a fin reappeared. Izuku. Stop playing around. When he was about to take it, he noticed another fin on the other side, alerting the boy. Izuku. There are two. At that moment you begin to see more fins which surrounded Izuku. Izuku. What's going on? When the boy was about to move just behind him on the right side something bit him on his neck, which made him let out a small moan of pain as he saw. Izuku. Momo. What are you doing? He just noticed that the sheets were still moving, but he didn't expect another person to bite him, and when he looked at it, it was Kefla surprising him. Izuku. Kefla. Momo. We are your sharks that want to eat you. Without warning another one bit him on the right side of his body at the height of his chest, Mina being the one who was going to make him fall on one side, but at that moment on the left side at the height of the belly's mouth, Jiru bit him, followed by a little lower on the right side. Izuku. What are you doing? Hefla. We marked you. So that you would bite him again. Izuku. Marking. Momo. At night while we were sleeping the girls used their member and lost their virginity with you, but I have no problem sharing you because they feel the same way I feel about you. Before he could do anything, Tomi bit him on the left shoulder and Kasumi on the right, so that they would lay him down on the bed while they bit him, but Margaret bit him on the right side of his chest, to Izuku's surprise. On the left side of his chest, Kazami bit him. When the girls left, he saw how Margaret did something with her hands, so that the bites would disappear, to Izuku's surprise, but he couldn't continue because Kazami bit him on the left side of his chest. Izuku. The bites are gone. Margaret. But you will have to have Hex with us again, and it will be like a test, because you will do it in an area where we will have the advantage, and apart from that, the bite of the girl who will do the test will return, if the girl bites you where you have the bites you will weaken, giving us a greater advantage. Sigh. We still have plenty of time to sleep. The girls began to use Izuku's body as a pillow, after a while they all woke up to get dressed and go to their rooms, followed by going to classes being normal. Chapter 13. After the girls had marked Izuku so that they could go to their class so they could start with their thing, but they spent some time there until Izawa entered who did not seem like a very happy person, making them ask what was happening until he said a few words. Izawa. Put on your hero outfits and we'll do some tests. Everyone did as requested to get on the bus and arrive at a place. Izawa. These tests are just for rescue, they will be in a kind of competition with the other schools. Everyone had agreed this for them to go in for testing. Siro. Izuku, what do you think if we team up? Izuku. Okay, is anyone else here? Siro. Solo, Tomi, Izumi and Yuraka. Izuku. Okay, I'm in. 
The group only entered the place so they could see everything. Izuku. Well, let's do one thing. Tomi. What? Izuku. Tomi, I want you to keep the other schools away, they will possibly attack us, Izumi will be the closest along with Yuraka and Siro, so they can rescue the civilians. Izumi. And you. Izuku. I'll take care of the other side where the schools are apart from the civilians. Siro. How? Izuku. Cage Busan. They saw many clones of Naruto. Siro. I forgot you can do that. Izuku. You forget everything. The group along with the clones entered to begin going through the place rescuing the civilians who were trapped, but with Izuku he looked at the school so they wouldn't approach. Izuku. Looks like we're doing well. Out of nowhere he jumped away from a girl who tried to hit him with a ball. Izuku. Nice try, darling. I'm Kami and you're under arrest. Izuku. Why? Kami. For stealing my heart. Izuku. How direct. Kami appeared behind Izuku to hug him, causing the two of them to fall to the floor, but Kami was on top of Izuku. Kami. Get ready because you will be mine, I've been interested in you since you fought all for one. Out of nowhere the two of them moved away because of an explosion, so that a cloud of dust could be seen, but through it Yuraka came out. Yuraka. Izukun. Izuku. You're not fooling me Kami, I can feel your energy, and I know you're not Yuraka. At that point, things were back to normal. Kami. Interesting. Kami tried to go against Izuku, but he jumped away. Izuku. It seems our talk will be for later. Izuku left the place, with Tomi they were going to give him a kind of cement, but he disappeared so that he would be in Izuku's arms. The Momi. Izuku. Izuku. Tomi, make a wall of ice that separates them from you, I'll take care of them. Tomi. Okay. Tomi made an ice wall while Izuku looked at Great Orca. Gee Orca. Do you really think you can fight us? Izuku. Obviously yes, if I could against All Might and Endeavor I can against someone like Voice. Giorka. We'll see. Giorka went against Izuku using his sound to attack him, but Izuku dodged it as if it were nothing before him, Giorka received a kick followed by a punch, but out of nowhere, Izuku's right arm was covered in cement, so he could see the others who accompanied G. Orca so he chose to go against them as well, beginning to knock them all unconscious, but his left leg was covered in cement, so he could see Giorka. Izuku. Looks like there's one more left. Giorka. Those blows were strong but not enough. He began to fill Izuku's body with cement so that he could begin to throw his sound from him, hitting Izuku fully, who just stayed still. Giorka. You can't move, I'm the winner of this fight. Out of nowhere it started to get hotter as the cement on Izuku's left arm broke, so he could see how Izuku grew bigger as the cement slowly broke. Izuku. I can't move. And who decided that? The cruel sun formed in his hand. Izuku. You won this fight. And who decided it? Giorka. Who are you? Izuku. I'm your master and you're my bitch, I'm the one who decides. He throws the cruel sun at him, hitting him squarely, causing him to be sent flying until he ended up on a wall with burns, after that they went to see if they passed, and they indeed passed. Chapter 14. After Izuku has passed the tests to have his hero license apart from defeating Giorka, he is currently walking with Mirio through the streets while they talk about the subject of overhaul, until at one point a girl runs into Izuku. Izuku. Is something wrong? I helped the girl get up, but in a second the girl hugged Izuku with noticeable fear. Girl. Please help me. Izuku's mind. What happened? Then a voice is heard. Man. Iri come here, I'm sorry if I bothered you. The girl named Iri, upon knowing who it was, hugged Izuku even tighter, being noticed by him. Izuku's mind. That's overhaul and this girl is quite scared. Mirio. Come on Izuku, leave that girl with her father. Izuku stood up while holding Iri in his arms. Izuku. Mirio take tea to Iri at UA and leave it in my room. Mirio. But. Izuku looked at him making him scared so he did as he was asked. Overhaul. What do you think you're doing? Izuku. Don't act like good old dad overhaul, notice his wounds and you'll pay for it. Overhaul. I see. Izuku. I won't let you get close to him. Overhaul. We'll see. He began to take off his gloves in front of Izuku who looked at him to prepare to fight. Overhaul. I'll finish you off quickly. Izuku. Not if I do it first. At that point he begins to feel a tremor in the place, with Izuku causing an earthquake to the point that Overhaul had a hard time staying standing. Overhaul. That's some serious power. He touches the wall so that some spikes go against Izuku who just stayed still, but when he was close to him, he destroyed him with a single blow. Izuku. Do you really think you can handle me? I'm the strongest. Overhaul. We'll see about that. 
it was against Izuku who was just looking to dodge a touch from overhaul to give him a blow that sent him flying, so he could see how a Kai Sphere went against him, hitting him full on causing a cloud of dust to form, but when the dust went away, overhaul could be seen with an injured arm, but before the villain could do anything Izuku kicked him sending him flying. Izuku. I'm surprised you're still alive but it won't be for long. Overhaul stood up with great difficulty as he looked at Izuku. Izuku. I'll finish you off once and for all. He made some hand signals to throw a large amount of fire that made a cloud of dust, but when he left the place he had large burns, and Overhaul was not there. Izuku. You escaped this time, but you won't be saved next time. After saying that he left the place until he reached the UA when he entered to go to his room seeing Eri. Eri. Don't hurt me. Izuku. Calm down, I didn't come to hurt you, in fact the opposite, to take care of you. From now on you'll be fine. Eri. Are you serious? Izuku. Yes, come I'll buy you some clothes and food for you. Eri just accompanied him being watched by everyone as she was with the white-haired girl that Mirio was with before. Aminari. Izuku and that girl. Izuku. I'll explain it to you later. That's how I left the UA. Chapter 15. After Izuku had been with Mirio so that he finished rescuing Eri from overhaul and went to the UA where he entered a room where Eri was who was obviously scared of the place and how could she not be if she was with a villain for a while. Izuku. Eri right. Are you okay? Eri. Where am I? Izuku. Calm down, you're safe, it's the UA dormitories, the UA academy. You were. UA. Izuku. The academy where people study to be heroes, they see that I just want to talk. The girl approached Izuku a little while sitting next to him. Izuku. Why don't you tell me why that villain had you? The girl didn't say anything, but Izuku understood the reason for her silence. Izuku. Is it your quirk? The girl agreed. Izuku. You're afraid that if you tell me your quirk I'll end up abandoning you. The girl nodded again. Izuku. You know something eerie, I have more than one quirk and they are very powerful, I couldn't control them, so I took medication so that I wouldn't get out of control, I spent years holding back, but now I can don't hold back anymore. Eri just looked at him as he began to tell her the story of how he awakened his quirk of Ella, and how he was abandoned by his parents of Ella, and found by overhaul as an experiment. Izuku. Eri, I promise you that that villain will never hurt you again. In fact, I myself will make sure that he goes to prison. Eri. You promise? Izuku. I promise, it's more of a fist bump. The girl just fist bumped. Izuku. A hug. The girl hugged him. Izuku. Now you have to show me a smile, but first let's go so I can introduce you to the others. Izuku left the room with Hiri to go to the living room where he introduced each of his classmates to him. Lie. A girl my size. The dwarf had a perverted face, but some people with UN written on them came through the door as they took them away. Mineta. I didn't do anything. Izuku. Well, one less partner. Iri just watched this so everyone went to where Iri was and started talking to her. Hiroshima. Izu bro, you don't look very happy. Izuku. I'm going to have to do some things. He said this as he walked out. Izuku. By the way, is Overhaul still at home? Hiroshima. Yeah, wait, you're not going to. Before he could say anything else, Izuku jumped to where Overhaul was, who was speaking with the precepts of death, but out of nowhere a fireball hit the place, causing everyone but two to become unconscious. Overhaul. What the hell? Izuku. Overhaul, today you will pay for your crimes. The one who looked like a giant tried to do something against Izuku, but the boy was faster, hitting the air cracking it, so that the giant flew out as if nothing happened before Overhaul's eyes, who then only made some spikes that went against Izuku, who destroyed them with one arm before Overhaul, who tried to do the same, but before he hit Izuku, a Susano was present. Protecting him from the attack. Izuku. You won't be able to beat me. Overhaul ran in order to do something, but when he hit Izuku he didn't flinch, and even more so when he tried to use his quirk, but nothing happened. Overhaul. Impossible. Izuku only used one of Susan's arms to hit him, sending him flying, followed by taking him with Susan's hand and smashing him against the floor while the heroes came. Izuku. It's about time, they took too long. The heroes just took the villains to leave the place. Chapter 16. After Izuku took Yuri to the dorms, apart from finishing with overhaul and the precepts of death, they were all currently calm in the living room, although they had Izuku tied up in case he did something stupid like the one he did a while ago, like going after a villain like overhaul. Lita. Listen everyone, the cultural festival is coming up and we need ideas on how to help. At those words, everyone raised their hands, not letting Lita speak for all the ideas they were throwing out. Izuku. Now this is going to be chaos. Momo. And I think you have a better idea if you walk like that. Izuku. In fact there are two, one is to make a tournament where we can all fight. 
Paminari. Yes, but only you would be the winner. Momo. And the other idea. Izuku. The other one will surely end up being a concert where we all help and that's it. Everyone began to think about that idea and agreed on that idea, but Eerie entered through the door. Izuku. What are you doing here Eerie? Eerie. It's just that I felt very lonely and I wanted to keep you company, dad. All. Dad. Izuku. It's just that he became very fond of me. The girl left with Izuku while Mineta was very nervous because he remembers very well that he was threatened by Izuku, that if he did something perverted, Izuku himself would end up killing him. When he was about to turn his head to where Iri was, everyone began to hear music so the dwarf returned to normal. Aminari. And that music that played while ago. Izuku. It's the music that plays when those black people dancing while carrying a coffin appear. Mineta. I can't take it anymore. The dwarf turned around with a perverted face, but when he did Izuku was in front of him. Izuku. Good thing I warned you. Some black people came through the door with a small coffin so that Izuku could beat poor Mineta to death and put him in the coffin so that the black people could start dancing while they left. Izawa. Wait, that kid is still alive. He said this while running after the black men who for some reason while dancing were moving further away from Izawa. Hiroshima. Well we lost a partner. Lita. Izuku brings Lai back. Izuku. I'm sorry but when the blacks take him away there's nothing to do but wait for them to bury him, so we have to dig him up. Jiru. He also gets the same treatment for being a pervert. The girls agreed with Jiru while in a distant part of the UA, they were already burying Mienta, and when they finished they left dancing, so that Azawa could begin to unearth his student who was still alive. Aminari. And what do we have to do? Izuku. I think we have to start seeing what we can do at the cultural festival, you know, like a dance or something like that, well one has to sing and the rest play the instruments. Everyone thought it was a good idea so they left the place. Chapter 17. After the announcement about the sports festival was made, everyone began to prepare, although Izuku's was already ready. At this moment, the boy was walking through a park near the sea through the forest, where no one would be able to see him in the slightest, until he heard some footsteps. Izuku. I know you're around, Kurohij. He said this while a fat man with a black beard, a pirate hat, green pants with weapons on his belt and black clothes appeared at the place. Kurohij. So you know me. Izuku. Yes, I know why you eat. Kurohij. And why am I coming? Izuku. You know that years ago you could no longer use the power of earthquakes, so you looked for the person who had it until you came to me. Kurohij. Apparently he was a very smart boy as well, so he gave me the devil fruit and no one will leave. He was silenced by a blow from Izuku that sent him into the trees, causing him to end up emerging from the rubble. Kurohij. It seems you don't let the talk. He was again silenced by another punch from Izuku. Kurohij. I change my mind about you, you are rude. Izuku. That or you talk too much in a fight. Kurohij was upset until he changed to a smile to bring out darkness which went against Izuku, but he himself walked in the darkness, as if it were nothing to be in front of Kurohij, who ended up receiving a blow from the green-haired man, sending him flying against a rock. Kurohij. I'm tired of these games. The pirate watched as Izuku was going to hit him with a white sphere, so he could block it with the palm of his hand, causing the attack to go away. Kurohij moved away to take out his weapons with which he shot at Izuku, who at this took out Shirohij's spear, with which he stopped all the shots, as if it were nothing. Kurohij. What do you think about this? He said this while drawing out a large amount of darkness. Izuku. That you are weak. Blackbeard. What? Izuku. You heard it very well, when Whitebeard died you needed help from your useless friends to kill him in another sense you didn't kill him, you are really a coward and weak. Kurohij. You'll see, damn kid. The pirate launched himself against Izuku who at this formed a white sphere ready to crash into Kurohij who at this ended up disappearing with his darkness, although he did not expect Izuku to use his spear to make a cut to the pirate who at this fell to the floor, holding his chest in pain, since the cut was at that point. Izuku. You are certainly not the great threat that I expected, and that is why I will kill you with Shirohij's power. The boy made a white sphere in his fist to throw it at the fat man who could only use his darkness to avoid the deadly attack that ended up crashing, applying a huge amount of pressure. Kurohij. Why doesn't your attack disappear? Izuku only pushed harder to end up hitting Kurohij fully, leaving him dead on the floor. Izuku. I win. The green-haired man just left the place. Chapter 18. After Izuku ended Kurohij's life so that he could return to UA, the days passed and the time came where he had to go to Overhaul's attack, since they were in front of his house and were more than ready for them to start walking. Mirai. Remember our target is Overhaul. At one point Rikia stood in front of them. Rikia. Don't even think I'll let you pass this part. Izuku. We'll see about that. 
Are you Q under the sky to be on top of Rakia? Are you Q? You guys go, I'll take care of him. Everyone went inside to start running. Azuku. I feel something approaching. Mirai. Where? Azuku. Through the walls. At one point some of them had to dodge a pill that was made of one of the walls that ended up taking Kirishima, along with a professional. Azawa. Can you take care of him? Azuku. You are. They saw how he made a Kai sphere that he ended up throwing, which was beginning to go through the walls until it reached the villain causing an explosion, leaving him unconscious. Azuku. That's enough. Mirai. Mirio is missing. Azuku. It was probably because of overhaul alone. Azawa. Atalanta and Azuku. The boy did as he said and left the place at high speed, going directly to where Mirio was, watching how he was fighting Overhaul, who was about to touch him but kicked him in the face, sending him flying. Mirio. Thank you. Azuku. Now we just have to defeat him. Mirio. Although it's not going to be easy. Azuku. Just leave it to me. He made a Kai sphere that he launched at Overhaul, who tried to make a wall to avoid it, but it didn't work. He ended up dodging it, although the waves sent him flying. Azuku. You better leave this to me. Mirio. I'm not sure. They saw how Overhaul now had two arms on his back to generate hundreds of spikes that went against them, and with this they had to start dodging it. Azuku. I'm sure I can handle him. He said this while making a cruel sun that he launched against Overhaul who tried to send some pills to avoid getting hurt, but he ended up doing the opposite since the attack hit him squarely, causing him to have some burns on his body to Mirio's surprise. Azuku. Go away. At one point the roof collapsed, leaving Rikia unconscious next to Overhaul, who was just looking at him to make him explode as he began to grow larger. Mirio. I think we need something bigger. Azuku. And I have something. He said this as he began to move on to the Manjikyo Sharingan, and the perfect Susano appeared in the place which, due to its eyes, had to take out its wings to begin to fly. Iraka. What is that thing? Najire. If we look closely, Azuku is inside that. Everyone was surprised at that while Overhaul looked at him to launch himself against him, touching the Susano, thinking that he already won, but nothing happened. Overhaul. Why doesn't my quirk work on this? Azuku. It's easy, the perfect Susano has no weaknesses against attacks as pathetic as yours. He saw how he pulled out Susan's sword, scaring him, but in a second he ended up cutting half of her body. Mirai. He's already defeating him. Azawa. No doubt my son is amazing when he uses all his power. Azuku. Now you will see the power of the Manjikyo Sharingan. But Susano's sword he ended up destroying what was left of the body, leaving Overhaul in his original form to receive a blow from Susano that left him unconscious. Azuku. I hope that's all over. He said this as he began to return to normal. Iraka. That was amazing. Azuku. It was just the power of my Manjikyo Sharingan, nothing special. He said this as he began to leave the place in front of everyone's gaze. Chapter 19. After Izuku defeated Overhaul, once again demonstrating great power, he was now walking calmly down the street, but began to hear a sound of climbing above the bridge where he was, so he jumped to see a truck turn over, leaving Chisaki behind and Tamura walking near him. Tamura. Too bad Chisaki, we would have become good allies. Before the villain did anything, a blow sent him flying so they could see Izuku. Izuku. I'm sorry but I don't think that can be done. Tamura. You damn thing. He barely took a step when a huge amount of fire hit Izuku directly, causing him to look at Davi with boredom. Izuku. It seems like they don't learn. From his hand he made a small cruel sun that he threw at the villains who had to dodge it, but the waves sent them flying, causing them to get hurt in the process, but they began to hear the heroes approaching. Tamura. This is bad. They ran away from the place while Izuku just watched this. Jisaki. Why did you help me? Izuku. I help you because that's what a hero does, no matter the dangers that surround me, I have to protect everyone even if I'm a villain. Jisaki. I see. When they arrived Izuku just left the place arriving at the UA where everyone was waiting to see him. Lita. Where were you Izuku? Izuku. I've been a little busy. Mina. Are you the one from the news? He said this as everyone watched as they talked about Izuku, who had a small confrontation with some of the League of Villains. Hiroshima. Hey, that was dangerous. Izuku. What does it matter? I won anyway and out of shame they ran away as soon as they heard the heroes approaching. Momo. But why did they fight? Izuku. First because they are villains and second they were probably after Chisaki to take his hands out, you know, cut them off, burn them or use Tamura's quirk, they were going to do any of them. Izumi. You should have let them do that after all he was a villain. Izuku. 
a villain but it doesn't matter, he was someone who was defenseless without being able to use his quirk, I fight for what is fair, and taking someone's hands off when they are about to receive their sentence is not fair, but quite the opposite. The boy began to walk calmly to go directly to where Eri was. Izuku. Hey Eri, I want you to know something. You were. Yes. Izuku. Chisaki will never bother you again, I can assure you. Eri. Really. Izuku. Yes, I took care of him myself. But those words, the girl ended up hugging Izuku in a way as if he were a father with his daughter before the eyes of all the girls who saw him as something beautiful. Mina. Without a doubt that girl will be my daughter, and I will teach her many things. Hefla. Are you kidding? I'm going to be her mother, she has to be quite the warrior. Momo. She needs to get a good education and get the best things for her life, and I can do that. The girls began to fight, while Izuku left the place with Eri with great tranquility. Eri. Dad, what are we going to do? Those words surprised Izuku, but he stood firm to think. Izuku. Let me think about it a bit. After a while everyone was walking calmly, but they saw Izuku's door half open, so they entered seeing an Izuku in a green sleeping bag, while he was in front of Eri who was playing. Dear Shima. What are you doing? Izuku. My name is Dad and if I want to be the best dad in the world, I have to learn how to do that. Haminari. And you think that looking like Azawa is the best idea. Izuku. This is how I fry you, Mama Caterpillar. They heard something move and saw Azawa in his sleeping bag. Azawa. You're on the right track Izuku-san. Mineta. This is ridiculous. Azawa. That's all, Izuku-san teach him the art of a Mama Caterpillar. Izuku. My mother is a scientist. They saw how he got up still wearing the sleeping bag, and with a few small jumps he spun around, kicking Mineta sending him flying into infinity and beyond, causing everyone to lose sight of him. Haminari. New height. Izuku. Who's next for this? Everyone started to leave a little scared as Azawa started to leave, but Izuku's girls put me inside his sleeping bag. Eri. What are they doing? Mina. Well if you have a daddy caterpillar then you need mommy caterpillars. Hefla. It's true, isn't it Izuku? Izuku. Yes, it's true. He said it with some nervousness that Eri ended up ignoring while inside the sleeping bag he felt like they were touching him. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.